Hello guys and welcome back to another episode on the Hermitcraft server. Today we're going to jump right into it. I've got a project in mind that I want to get on with so I set up this little thing here to show you. So earlier I was in the end farm, I was doing some enchanting after I'd gone branch mining. I actually got 87 diamonds from that which was awesome. Uh, so I decided to go and enchant some of those. And while I was there I saw that Hypno had added a enderpearl disposable system. So there is a chest on the side that you can put the enderpearls into and hoppers will take those out of the chest and then dispense them into the void. And it got me thinking that that could be more automated because with that system you'd have to go up to the chest and you'd have to shift click all of your enderpearls into it. And there's also the uh, unfortunate uh, chance that you can ac accidentally shift click in the wrong items as well. So what I figured was that we could actually make the floor out of hoppers and then those items would automatically get sucked up and we could have a disposable system that was automatic. So this is the first one that I've got here and this works brilliantly. If you see if I put in the items it just gets rid of them really quickly. We can control it as well so if you wanted to keep the ender pearls you could leave it like this and then have a look in the hopper or the dropper even at the end of it and you could take your ender pearls out and if this thing gets filled up it will just get backed up in the hoppers as well so if you actually went there looking for ender pearls there'd be loads of hoppers full of them and I imagine over time as people use them the whole thing will probably get filled up if someone doesn't uh, turn this thing on. Now this makes noise as well uh, but that's not really a problem at the enderman farm because you turn down your volume anyway and when this thing's done it doesn't actually make noise because all of this is quiet as you can see. So let's just pick these up. Now the problem with this design here, that's why I have two designs, is because the ender farm is built all the way at the very bottom of the y-axis and I think it's this level here where we'd have our dropper that is the very last block that you can place so we wouldn't be able to put down these comparators and this little design here I saw on an AC tennis video as well, I thought it was really cool. I just happened to have the idea of doing this at the same time and so this thing actually did the job better and yeah we can't place the comparators on any blocks because they'd be too low down so we won't be able to use this design now when I get over there I'm going to bring the materials for this with me just in case I'm wrong but I'm fairly sure we can't use that but I wanted to show it anyway and the other design is this one which we will probably be using and just a simple switch that you hit and it's a little bit slower and if you leave this on the clock's going to keep going as well even if uh, there's no more items being fed into the dropper so you could also use a dispenser for this as well actually, you don't have to use the dropper, I just picked that out because of the way it works with the comparator. Um, I'm not even sure if that's actually just a dropper feature, the dispenser might work the exact same way. So anyway, I'm going to pick up these materials and we're going to head over to the end farm. Okay, we are ready to uh, build this. I've been making some preparations and been thinking about what it is that I'm going to do. Uh, there's still a few things I'm unsure of, for example where exactly the drop is going to go because I want it to be accessible so someone can come along and open it but it will be able to dispense items into the void as well and that could be a little tricky because we've got to consider that someone needs to right click on it we need a repeater facing into the air block above it and it needs to have one side where there isn't a block so I'm not sure how that bit's going to go down but I'll fit it in somewhere in this area then in here you can see I've removed the floor and that was the only way I could get rid of the enderman I did want to just block it up like this but because they're so tall you kill them and they're spawning so quickly they fill up all the space so I had to remove the floor so I could then fill in the ceiling and now there's loads of them up there rammed into a little space and occasionally they like to derp down which is quite amusing um, but I've been counting out how many blocks there are here it's 15 wide and 4 deep so that means about 60 hoppers and what I realised is that the ender pearls could possibly land against the fence posts here and they'd be on these blocks and they wouldn't get sucked into the hoppers which I think is probably going to happen so I might actually have to change this at some point in the future but for now um, all I have with me is around 60 of these hoppers so just enough to do all of this. Now I think maybe down the middle here or somewhere on the side I want to bring a line of hoppers out and the reason we want to do that is because when we place our dropper we need to place the hopper into it like that to connect to it so we need to work our way out from the position of the dropper which means we're going to have like a funnel system so there's going to be a line of hoppers that lead from that room into the dropper and then from those lines of hoppers we'll have a whole group of other ones because they're going to pass through like pipes so we need to create an efficient system for that but I don't think it's going to be uh, anything too difficult to figure out so that is pretty much all that I have to do um, now I'm going to build it and 
yep, it's quite likely that I could die because we're right down here at the void in the end and there's lots of endermen so I've been clever enough to put all of my items into this chest. Okay, this is almost finished and there is one fatal flaw that I didn't think about which is you can actually stand inside these things. Now, if you're walking along like this it doesn't really uh, bother you but if you walk right down the middle it's probably not going to do it now that I'm recording but you can kind of just drop down for a second into these and it can be really annoying um, but other than that it's it does exactly what it's supposed to now this dropper right here is pointing into this half slab which is something that I recently discovered when doing the automated brewing stand that if this points into the half slab it will dispense the items into it and they will drop downwards um, so you can also access that and pick them out if you want them or you want some ender pearls from the other ones here um, it hasn't filled up much yet though and then if you turn it on it's going to automatically get rid of them so while you're in there punching away you can leave this on and it will get rid of all the ender pearls for you and um, you don't have to worry about them being in your inventory or anything like that as well now the only thing that I have to do now and here is finish the back bit and it's just because I've run out of hoppers and I've got to be careful I've got no armor and it's very easy to be hit by the enderman uh, but I only have seven left and I don't have any more wood. I've got plenty of iron with me but not wood. And it looks like I forgot to remove a couple of blocks at the end here as well. Um, so I have to go back to Avalon, just finish making the last few hoppers and put them in here. And then it will be done. And earlier I was talking about the funnel system. Uh, this one right here, they all link like that going straight down to where the dropper is. And then all of the ones that branch off on either side, they go in a straight line like that so if an item ends up in the one at the end it goes through all of these hoppers into the one in the middle and then straight off which I thought was probably the smartest way to do it that's why I decided to put it in the middle here and then it makes it nice and easily accessible as well you can just walk over here right click and uh, grab yourself <laughs> I'll take those grab yourself some ender pearls I actually have a list of things that I want to be doing at the moment there's lots of little jobs and this is one of them over at the pumpkin farm what I want to do is replace the timer with a new one because this will harvest the pumpkins every five minutes we're basically using the despawn time of an item so it's on that pressure plate and when when that despawns it's going to dispense it a new one it looks like it does two at a time though which is just because I haven't set up the redstone right I think what I'd need to do is put a lever up the top and power it and then when this redstone powers that block it will only dispense one and that was pretty cool actually we got to see that <laughs> can see it in action so let's go wow those pistons are making a crazy noise up here and yeah all of that's been harvested now um, it's a shame we couldn't add a look to see how many have grown and it looks like some stay on the edges as well I think we can jump and pick that up there we go um, but it'd be interesting to see how many would have grown in five minutes but what I plan on doing is actually getting this thing to harvest say every minute or so so I want to build a new timer and it's one that I've done a tutorial on recently and judged on the amount of views and likes and the general feedback I don't think people uh, got the significance of the timer because the one that we have here uh, it does five minutes but you have to come back and refill the dispenser and the timer that I built in that video which was designed by Psy Guy Ryan and um, you never have to come back and maintain it it will always work because it basically cycles items uh, through the hopper so when it gets put back into the hopper it doesn't keep its despawn time it gets reset and then it gets dispensed again and then you can customize the amount of time as well because you can drop it through cobwebs like this and if you needed something more precise you could probably set up some elaborate water streams or something else just to add more delay uh, but what I want to do is have a two minute timer rather than a five one so this will be just under two minutes if I remember it takes about 28 seconds for an item to pass through one of these cobwebs so what I'm just gonna do is build that and then show you it and explain in a little more detail than I did in the tutorial about how it works I've actually explained this enough already I just wanted to point out the significance of this this is a timer that once it's running it will run forever you don't have to worry about logging in or out or maintaining it in any form it can just sit here and it will continue to work so at the moment I've got it set up for just under two minutes so it's gonna harvest a lot more frequently than our previous timer did and I've built it all out of cobble because it's not something that we're ever going to come past and see really so it's fine being like that and what I want to do now is actually go into the nether and start automating the collection of these items as well because we had the little collection area on the other side and what we could do is put a couple of hoppers into the ground and then just hook them up to some 
to some chests and then whenever we go into the nether those items should get sucked into the hopper so we don't have to worry about them despawning and doing those little trips to pick up the items uh, that way we can just go and grab them when we need them so here are the hoppers and before I put them in I was observing where the items would land and it seemed like it was just on the corner here so they might not actually get sucked into the hoppers but that just means we add another two on either side so what I've set up here is nothing permanent it's just a test really because these are new features they're going to be changed and yeah there's no point doing anything permanent with them just yet so I've just got this temporary space here we've got two chests so that when this one fills up and look we've got some items already that's a good sign and when this fills up it will back up into this hopper here and then into the chest above so plenty of storage space for this if I don't remember to come down here and check on it for a while yeah we've got two double chests to fill up so the whole storage thing is going to change in the future, it's going to be automated and that's probably going to be using lots of water to transport the items around so I may have to abandon my nether storage hub that we have down there and yeah let's go through here, there was something else I was going to show you I actually forgot to hook up the timer to the pumpkin farm so I'll just show you that quickly what I've done here is if I've, I've inverted the signal, this is like the output and so this is on and that can be controlled by this redstone torch so you can hit this and turn the timer on and off and then you've got the button which is just to activate the farm that feeds into this sand block here and so does this one here so when that torch is on what you saw right there wouldn't happen because this would stay on and this wouldn't get inverted and power the farm this bit over here if you've forgotten is our double pulsar and that's just to push the pistons off twice in case any of those pumpkins uh, land on the edges. Now we can actually go back through and see where those pumpkins are on the other side. Okay, I didn't pick them up. I had a feeling that right as the nether would load we would pick them up before the hoppers would. And I do have some pumpkins in my inventory. I'm not sure if I just picked them up or <laughs> they were already in there. Anyway, we can go have a look and see if this works. Oh, wrong one. Nope. <laughs> It is possible that no pumpkins had actually grown. I think I picked them up, you know, I'm going to have to watch the footage back. So it turned out that I did actually pick the pumpkins up, so I'll be testing that later on. But now I'm in the nether, and you may be wondering why I'm here. Well, I'm going to be setting up what could be called a prank, but for me it's more of an experiment. Now the server has become very quiet the last couple of weeks, and people seem to be playing FTB more and more and more, and it seems like I'm only on here by myself most of the time. So. What I thought I would do is set up a little experiment. When people pass through the nether, they're going to be loading up the chunks and this place is going to be active for a while. And if you look in my inventory, you can probably guess what I'm going to do now. I'm going to set up an automatic uh, chicken farm. So we're going to have a bunch of chickens in a containment cell on top of a hopper. And that hopper is going to feed into a dispenser which will dispense the eggs that they lay. And then when it dispenses them, they're going to hatch on occasion and then they'll be free to wander around. Now. My original idea was to put it directly under the nether portals in the in the little, I don't know what you'd call that actually, but the thing that the chains hold up, this thing right here, the little platform with the lava, and I was going to hide it right in the middle of that, and then the chickens would fall down to the ground below. Uh, but then I realised that the chickens are going to be really noisy, and when you go through the portal you're going to hear it straight away. So I was looking around and I thought, you know what? down the back here might be a good idea. Let's see how long it takes to someone notices that I've actually set this thing up. So when they come through the nether, a few chickens are going to spawn every so often and then they're going to eventually start hatching and wandering their way around this area. And there's lava here that could kill them off and it could be quite some time before they make their way up into the main hub where people will actually start seeing them. Um, so <laughs> why that links to the server being in inactive at the moment to some degree I'm not sure but <laughs> maybe maybe someone will notice it and it will uh, give them something to do while they're on here but I'm just going to set that up, I'll show you it and then we'll move on to something else okay this is almost finished and I brought with me a lever to dispense the chickens out of the top one and it was so slow so I moved up the comparator setup that we had down below up to the top here and you know what, I won't be able to show you it until I finish dispensing these eggs. But what I realised you can do is instead of using four comparators like we had in the very beginning of the video, I'm using the same thing that I showed you there. I've now used two repeaters as well, which makes it slightly cheaper. And it should be done by now. 
Very nearly done. Okay, so now I can move all of this back down to the bottom. Uh, we don't really need to remove all of that. So, God, those chickens are really noisy, aren't they? So the setup is you have two repeaters in these two spots, and then you put your comparators, or comparators, as I should be calling them, in these two bits here. And then whenever there's an item in here, it's going to dispense it. Except I placed that one the wrong way around. Okay, let's put that the right way. And there you go. Okay, that's finished. There's now just this little hole. The dispenser is around the corner, so they've got a one way out into this area here. And now that I think about it, maybe I should have put a little drop here because they could walk back in. That doesn't really make any difference. They're just going to wander around, aren't they? So I think what I want to do now is get this thing going. I'm I'm going to do some AFKing here in the Never. I've actually got something else to do, which is perfect. So I'm just going to go stand over here in my shop for a while, and uh, we'll come back in a bit. The chickens have arrived. <laughs> I've been watching them wander around. Some of them like to wander into the lava. It's almost like a, a cooked chicken farm. Is this guy going to do it? Oh, that guy does. <laughs> there we go, some more cooked chicken. And I tell you what, I've seen a couple of them make their way up about this far and they've wandered into the lava here as well. So I'm not sure if they'll get too much further, but as time goes on there'll be more and more chicken and they'll have more and more chance of making their way into the main hub. And yeah, they like to hang around here because the young ones like to try and make their way back to the adults. If I just remove that, uh, a moment ago there was a load of them standing in there, that's why I've moved the netherrack like this. And so they're less obvious where they're coming from now. Uh, but I've just realised as well, well, I kind of knew it, but it's silly doing something like this on camera because um, some of the other hermits might watch my video and know that this is going on. So if you're one of those Hermitcraft members, just uh, keep this between you and me at the moment. <laughs> and we'll see. we'll see what happens. Maybe some people will notice the chickens around the hub and go check it out and see what's... Uh, what it is that I've built over there. So anyway, I want to go back to Avalon now and actually set up a little chicken farm because this is really cool what we've made over there. We could put them into a little containment area and leave it running and then after a while we'll have a load of chickens that we can harvest with lava or some other means like that. I've been working on a chicken farm for quite some time now and I've run into a problem which is based on the latest snapshot because this used to work in the previous one and this is a little item sorter which I'll explain in a moment. Um, but what you're seeing here is actually the end of the chicken farm. I've sort of been working my way backwards and everything that will go before it will be similar to what you've already seen. So we're going to have like a containment area for chickens with a hopper feeding into a dispenser and then that dispenser is going to hatch the chickens into a second area which will go on top of this hopper. Now this stuff here is a little rearranged at the moment because I've been trying to get this to work uh, but that hopper would feed into a dropper and dispense the items into this, into this water stream. But directly above that hopper would be where our chickens are contained and I'm not going to kill them with lava because I want the drops to be raw chicken rather than cooked chicken. And I'll explain why in a moment. Um, but what we're going to do is crush those chickens and we could have that on a timer and I'm probably not going to get around to doing it this episode but I was thinking that timer could be set up so it controls the dispenser that hatches chickens into that containment area. So after say 10 minutes it then turns on the timer and that time would be matched up to the, when the chickens in here become adults so that would be linked to the dispenser before it and it would stop it from hatching chickens and then when they get crushed in here uh, all the items will make their way down into this hopper into the water stream and then the dispenser before it can start hatching chickens into here again now the water stream will separate all of the items that's what I'm building at the moment uh, eggs would go into the end here and then before it we would have feathers and in this one we would have our raw chicken and what I'm thinking of doing here is having this feed into a furnace that has another hopper feeding into it so it gives it all of the fuel that it needs and then it can automatically cook the chicken for us now we could have another hopper on that that then automatically puts it into a chest but I was thinking if we left it like that I could come along and just drag the chicken out of the furnace which would give me a little bit of XP not much but I think it's cool you can get XP from doing things like that. So every time I come past here I can basically pick up a stack of chicken. Although now that I talk about it, uh, the XP you get would be pretty wimpy considering you could have it all automated. You could then have a water stream, bring all of the items over to the main hub area as well. So <laughs> I probably won't do that now. Uh, but anyway, this is broken and the way that this works is 
this is outputting a signal based on how many items are in here so if I add some more items in these would be like the ones that go above you can see that it dispensed them or sorry better yet it fed them through into the chest behind it just for a moment there so when we put in more items the signal length is increased and then it will invert this torch and change the signal in front of it which at the moment is powering this hopper and when it's powering it it's not going to feed any items through into the chest in front of it and this is where they made the change now before when you had items in the water stream above it let's see if I can chuck some of those in and it was powered the hopper would still suck the items into the hopper but now it doesn't do that it just completely ignores them so the way I think that we can fix this is to actually have another hopper directly below it that's always full up and have that one controlled uh, by this signal here so we'd have the same system at the top then some items would go into it and they would go into the hopper below which has been changed because the signal length would have changed and then those items would feed through into a chest so I think that'll work um, I'm just going to build it now and see if it does okay this works and it's actually better than the one that we had before because it can now handle more items at once if you remember we just had one hopper and in here we had a filter so we could only take in a stack of items at a time but with this setup we can actually take five stacks of items at once which is a lot better so what we've done is we've separated the locking mechanism by having a second repeater below it and this one now has the filter and a full stack of items here so at the moment it's locked it can't move any of the items into this chest and it can't receive any more items from above so when the one above it gets more items the signal is going to come to the end here and invert the one below it which means this gets opened up and it can move items into the chest and then it can receive ones from above as well so it's improved and uh, it now works in the latest snapshot so here it is I had a feeling this thing would look really strange and what a surprise it does um, but you know what this is one of the first projects like a little machine like this that I've worked on purely in survival I usually always go into a creative world and do most of it in there um, so it's nice to do that for a change it took me so much longer than I expected and I've just noticed something as well if I chuck these eggs in here and then hop back down to the bottom you can see it looks like it fires some of the eggs through but I'm pretty sure that's a visual glitch I've been watching it and I haven't seen any chicken hatching over here in the distance or anything it just kind of stops midair out there so yeah that's the chicken farm these guys are going to uh, lay some eggs after they've grown up and then they're going to automatically get hatched into this bit I can then stop that from happening by pulling that bit and it stops the circuit that will automatically dispense those and then when those guys are grown up into adults as well I can crush them and then leave it like that all the drops will go down into the dropper into the water stream they'll get sorted out and that is my chicken farm idea right there uh, I think what I might be doing next episode or knowing me I'll probably move on to something else and leave this for a while but getting these two pistons on a timing circuit would be really great because then you could automate the entire thing which I think would be awesome uh, but that is it for this episode as always I want to say thank you for watching and I will catch you next time